It's now been a full week since the Gods Above gifted us Garden Warfare 3. It sprouted up in the form of Plants vs Zombies Battle for Neighborville literally out of nowhere. EA just shadow dropped the game on our beautiful faces with little fanfare, no lead up, and boom it was out. And the best part was you could just play it immediately. But it was such an interesting and unique way of launching a title that I wanted to dive into my first week of experience and if I think now is the right time for you to use your hard-earned money on this game. Should you buy PVZ Battle for Neighborville right now? That's the question that we're exploring in today's video. What's up everybody, it's Ghost Robo. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Hit that like button if you are ready for some gaming goodness because this has been a fantastic few weeks and I'm super glad that PVZ is a part of it. Definitely let me know in the comments down below if you've picked the game up already, what you think of it, if you're planning to pick it up, or if you're skipping it, I'd love to know why. Let's talk about it in those comments. I'm gonna tell you my take. So they launched this as a Founders Edition, cheaper than what it'll cost when it releases on October 18th. Now this is a super unique and weird way to do things, especially with a very prominent, and some would say, very AAA franchise, right? This isn't just like a Steam game that's trying to enter early access to tweak and tune as they go and maybe earn a little early money. No, this is a major property, a major franchise from Electronic Arts who don't need any extra cash. And the game's not even really early access because it's out October 18th and it's content complete, they're just tweaking the modes. But what they decided to do is launch at $30 instead of the retail $40 and slowly add the different modes and features of the game into the package. Now, I'll be honest with you. The content available on day one, week one, if you dropped your 30 bucks on September 4th, it's a little, it was a little slight. They gave you one PVE region, which don't get me wrong, is a super cool town center area that is full of awesome missions and then an absolutely memorable boss battle. I think that the old school fight is one of the best of 2019. And I'm so glad that they took nods from Splatoon and Nintendo to make that thing incredible. And I like what they've done with the single player. I think it's styled a little bit better this time around. But on the multiplayer side of things, week one only gave you one mode. And it's Turf Takeover, which is possibly the game's best mode, but it's one mode. Now you also had access to Giddy Park, the social hub. You got a customization reward that's exclusive to founders from week one and won't be available ever again. But I could see how you look at that and say, you know what, I'm not ready to give them my money, especially not knowing what all is gonna be there, how quality it's gonna be, and what everyone thinks of this new system of 20 classes, but no variants, some upgrade ability perks, but no sticker packs, a freaking gumball machine, but no sticker packs. So holding off week one, I can't fault you there. This Founders Edition, remember, is only available till September 30th. So I think if you're interested at all in Plants vs Zombies Battle for Neighborville, you gotta get it before September 30th. Because if you wait till October 18th, you're paying $40, and even though everything will be there at that point, you're still going to get everything if you pay 30. It's just when do you drop that 30? When makes the most sense? Now, some would argue the earlier the better, so you have the most time to enjoy the game. But it's okay to wait for impressions. It's okay to wait and see. And honestly, guys and girls, I think this is the week where it makes the most sense to get in. If, if I looked at this map and, and I had to pick a spot to enter, I would say this week. There are a ton of games out there right now. A ton. And they're fully complete. They're ready to go. Gears 5 got awesome reviews. Borderlands 3 is absolutely incredible. We got good stuff over on the Switch. Still so sad that EA didn't want to bring PVZ to the Switch. It would have been a perfect fit. But your money has probably been spread thin when it comes to gaming the last month or so. This week though, they added the zombie PVE region, Weirding Woods. They added Team Vanquish to PVP and you got another customization reward. Now, it might not sound like a lot, considering that Gardens and Graveyard Ops is coming next week, mixed modes are coming to PvP next week, and then eventually we're getting this battle arena that I have no idea what that could be, but sounds super exciting, and they will continue to add more PvE regions, up to a total of four. Now, that's something to talk about, is that enough PvE regions, but no matter. Week two is a great spot, because here's why. You now have the option to play single player content with both the plants and the zombies. And that is a huge boost to the game. The zombies are really sweet this time. All three new zombies are, are really cool. I love 80s action hero. He may be my favorite class in the entire game. 
electric slide is really neat, and I've seen people getting a lot of mileage out of Space Cadet. And yeah, you could play them in Turf Takeover and check them out on the go, but you really can get into a groove when you get to play them in PvE. And you could jump down to Giddy Park and take out a few plants, but no, trust me, PvE is where this shines, and you get to experience the personality of these named zombie characters fight another great boss battle that again borrows from what Nintendo and Splatoon do. And if you're looking for a comparative review, I think Weirding Woods is a better locale than Town Center. Town Center may be bigger, I think it seems like it's got a little bit more of a sprawling nature to it, but the visual styling of Weirding Woods is super impressive. There's trees sprouting everywhere, and I can only imagine how they could possibly doll up this world for the holidays. Like if these trees that are sprouting out of every single crevice that you see had ornaments and Christmas lights, how freaking cool would that be? But regardless, it's a very unique and new looking area. Like Town Center looks a lot like things we've seen in PvZ before, but I really appreciate Weirding Woods for its uniqueness. And I think it may be a better region than the first. So you're not only getting double the PvE, you're not only getting access to the zombie side of single player, but you're probably getting the best region yet this week. And they add Team Vanquish to PvP. So if you're not interested in sitting down for a long battle of capturing zones or moving the payload, now you've got something a little more, uh, a little more generic, but that still fits the PvZ style very well. I love Team Vanquish personally. I think it might be my personal favorite mode, even though Turf Takeover is great. I kind of like getting in and getting out a little bit quicker, getting those coins, getting back to that gumball machine, and trying to drop another legendary, which are really, really nifty this time around. So I think that here is where you do drop your 30. If you're ever going to get Battle for Neighborville, I think now is the time. You could wait till next week when they'll bring in Garden and Graveyard Ops, but also know that next week they are not adding another PvE area. If you look at the calendar for the Founders Edition, you don't get Mount Steve, which is the second plant PvE region, until September 24th, which is the final week to become a founding neighbor, the final week to get it for $30. So I don't see why you'd wait that long, and that's running right up to the edge of the time where you can no longer get it for 30 Next week, honestly, is probably the weakest week to me. Week three is, is where they're adding the stuff that I'm the least excited about. I think week five is going to be awesome because you get a new zombie PvE region and you get Battle Arena and it's the beginning of the first festival event called Lawn of Doom. So that week is hot liquid fire. It's going to burn the freaking plants and the zombies if they're not careful. And week four, like I said, does give you the first weekly event on top of Mount Steep, that new plant region. It's where like all the the cheese stuff is going on if you've played on those multiplayer maps a real cool place so i think the time is now i think now is when you buy pvz and i think it is worth it if you'd worried that battle for neighborville that bfn was not going to live up to the gw name or hype i think it's safe i think it's okay this game is still so much bright colorful happy fun there's a lot to collect there's a lot to see and as they expand out and reach that full release on October 18th, you're, you're, you're definitely getting your money's worth at 30 bucks. You know, there was some debate of would this be free to play? Would they go the route of, you know, what EA did with Apex Legends and, and kind of utilize that model? They decided to go for a paid model. And I think the single player content really allows them to do so. I mean, they also have charged for PvZ in the past, so that definitely helps. And they're not asking for a full 60. If you're a founder, they're asking for half that price. But I've been really impressed with the PvE regions. They're a lot more fun than I expected them to be, and a serious step up from what Garden Warfare offered on the single player front. So if it's up to me, I say get in now. It is the best time and gonna be an opportunity to get in early so you feel like you took advantage of the founders, you get the cheaper price point, and this week has really, really it doubles the content. Doubling the single player content, doubling the multiplayer content, and you're still able to progress and, and collect coins. Remember, all that carries over. So anything you unlock here, this isn't like a beta or an alpha or some demo where you lose it all or they're going to reset the, the account settings or, or reset everyone's characters. No, everything will carry over. So any leveling progress that you make, any prestiging that you do, any ranking up, any coins that you collect, any costumes, any progress you make in Weirding Woods or Town Center or eventually Mount Steep, 
It's all going to be there. So definitely let me know in the comments down below if you're going to jump in now. And if you're not, I'm super curious why you would wait. Again, this ends September 30th. There is a gap, almost a three-week gap between launch and when you can no longer lock in at 30. And I guess just to touch a little on how the Founders experience has been, if you're wondering, it's been pretty darn stable and solid. I haven't had any crashes whatsoever. I haven't had any issues outside of, it seems to always want to put me on the plant side of things. I have trouble getting on the zombie team. That could just be a personal issue. But for the most part, things run really well. I know there are some nitpicks here and there, and they're going to be important fixes to make sure that everything's balanced and feels tuned and right for launch. But if you're, you're, you're thinking like maybe this feels incomplete, it really doesn't. I mean, on the content side, yes, but the game itself, like the loop, the gameplay, the mechanics, they're all nearly perfect and basically ready to go. I think this entire concept of taking a major game and kind of giving it to you piece by piece early for cheap, it, it's going to be an interesting one to look back upon. On one hand, like I like the idea of just having everything, so it's a Christmas morning experience of opening this great present that would be Battle for Neighborville and getting to experience all the regions and not having a stilt delay between, well, I completed Town Center, now I wait for Weirding Woods. And, well, I completed Weirding Woods, now I wait for Mount Steep. But it's it's made interesting because they're giving it to you cheaper. So why would you not want to pay less if you eventually get the same package? If they were charging the same or more for Founders, I think we might be having a little bit of a different discussion but it's really hard to ignore a $10 savings, especially as we approach the holiday gaming season. And, and frankly, it feels like we're in it full swing already, given how crazy August and September have been. That money is going to be helpful. And you get early access, you get the full game, and you save money. EA has set up a very weird proposition, but one I think you should take advantage of now. That'll do it for my take, everybody. Let me know yours in the comments down below. Super curious to hear if you picked it up already, what your thoughts are, if you're planning to pick it up this week. If you're not picking it up, why that may be. I'm curious. I'm very interested to see how this game progresses. And once they add in all of the, the weekly content, the festival content, if Battle for Neighborville does eclipse Garden Warfare, or if it'll always stand in its shadow, only time will tell. But in the meantime, everybody, thanks so much for watching. Hope you're in a fantastic day. Smash that like button if you enjoyed the video. Drink some hot chocolate. I love you a lot. And until next time, we'll see you all later.